This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. What's up everyone, Domino's here. What's going on? Konnichiwa! Hello everyone. Domino here. And welcome to part... Uh, let's see. Ichi ni san shi. Ichi ni ni. Two. Part two. Welcome to part two of the How to Make Your Own Manga series. I'm going to be showing you how it's done. So before, I talked about how to start off on the right path to make your manga. I talked about how to learn the ideal look your manga should be, how important it is to use the panel layout of your manga pages in a particular way that subconsciously invokes feeling to the reader. And now, I'm going to be talking about the best way to imitate the manga style for the original manga story that you're trying to create and also show you some of the best tools that you can use that are cheap, easy to get, and get the best out of your artwork visually. I also want to talk about story plot and theme that goes into making your manga, but maybe in the future if this series gets a lot of likes and comments, who knows, it might even work out. Okay, so first off, let me say that because everyone's drawing style is different, there's no standard or universal way to draw manga. No matter how many manga artists are out there, every one of their art styles are unique in some specific way. If you're trying to make your own manga and you're trying to draw your own stuff, and it doesn't quite look like what everybody else's looks like, then don't get sad and definitely do not give up. That's like the worst thing you can do is give up. So although most mangas kind of have a little bit of a universal look to it. If you look closely, they sort of look like they're almost the same, like there's some kind of standard look that manga's supposed to have. But there is none in actuality. Step two. Oh yeah, sorry about that. This is the second part. So if you didn't see how to make your manga part one, the link is in the description below. Click on that and then come back to this one. Okay, so um, let's begin. Now from the last video, we talked about how we wanted our manga to look and also to remember that panel layout is gonna be one of the most important parts of making our manga. Now we move on to materials. All this good shit. Yeah. The first material, a wide Sharpie. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. This can be used for broad borders and to fill in large black spaces that need coloring in a short period of time. Now if we look at some of this stuff here, this I bought from the eyeball. <laughs> Stole from the library. Shh, don't tell anyone. Some of my original works over here, and of course my Naruto, I gotta have my Naruto. And um, just notice how specifically for this page that I made, there's a lot of black inking involved. And if you try to do that with a small pen, it could take up a lot of time, not to mention it would kill your pen. I took the shortcut, my lazy ass, being that I, uh, the otaku that I am, just got one big ass fat sharpie that pretty much knocked out this whole bottom page in less than under a minute. And not only did it color the page efficiently, I also still have a whole lot of sharpie to go through before I have to spend money and buy another one to continue what's going on over there. Big sharpies help. Thumbs up for big sharpies. The second one, your regular sharpie. This is pretty much your average, everyday, find this laying around anywhere in the school classroom 
kind of Sharpie. You know, very cheap to buy, and they're pretty much everywhere. This is basically your fucking god. The almighty Sharpie can be used for bordering, drawing the outline of your panels and speech bubbles. A pack of Sharpies costs a lot less than a manga inking pen. So if you can use this in a way that would help use your manga inking pen less, it would save you money and also, hey, it's a fucking Sharpie. You can find this anywhere. Notice how in some of my original work, I have the speech bubbles inked out, the borders laid out, and it looks pretty good. And the way I got it to look so neat was because of my magical Sharpie arsenal. Fine point Sharpie, and before, the fat one, called the chisel tip. The chisel tip is what I use to save time on heavy inking, such as this page right here, with all of the black in the background, and the fine point Sharpie, or what I use for inking the speech bubbles and bordering the panels that don't have a thick border. The third one is your mechanical pencil. Ooh, yeah. Now this is something many people may not have, but if you just have the regular number two pencils, yes, I mean those yellow pencils you find in school where the erasers don't last a week and you need to sharpen them every five seconds. Yes, I'm talking about those. If you don't have a mechanical pencil, you can still use a regular yellow pencil, but just my personal opinion, this is better. The reason I'm putting this mechanical pencil on the list is because it can give you clear, uh, cleaner lines and the marks have a low chance of smudging. So you can use this for long periods of time without having to constantly sharpen the pencil over and over again to get the same thin, clean line that you want so your manga looks nice. Now, the piece de resistance, and no, I'm not fluid in French at all, I just know that as a cliche. Boom, this little guy right here. This is an inking pen, specifically manufactured in Japan. They come in different sizes. The name brand is called, I'm not sure if you can see it. Is it, oh, there we go, it's focusing. This is very, very important in your process of manga making madness. After you draw the manga on the paper, the ink pen is going to be your last and final mark. So you wanna choose a thin ink pen that will give you clean marks and look neat after you erase the pencil. So you wanna make sure you have a very good inking pen so that all of your last and final marks on the paper are damn near perfect. All of these materials are cheap and easy to find. It's how you use them that matters. Damn it, I forgot to talk about the paper. Okay. Now, as far as what to draw on, I just use copy paper. It's not even that special. You don't even have to buy anything super, super expensive, super special as a, as a medium to draw on. Go to your local store, you know, your 99 cent store or your office store like Staples and get a nice good stack of copy paper. Specifically, eight and a half by 11 inches. This is the kind of the rectangular size you want. That's it, Sharpies, a good inking pen, mechanical pencils, a good eraser, and some copy paper. So, as far as the paper, you don't need to really go out and go hard and spend a lot of money. Just get some copy paper, you're good to go. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this. Be sure to look out for part three, and if part three is already uploaded, go check it out. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up so we can keep this series going. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any other questions regarding on how to make manga, be sure to message my Facebook page. Minna arigato. Sayonara. Thanks everyone. Bye.